Senator Rennick. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. And can, can, can I congratulate uh, my coalition and crossbench colleagues today uh, for finally getting up an inquiry uh, into the terms of reference for a Royal Commission into COVID. It's been long uh, overdue, uh, and no thanks, no thanks to the Labor Party and the Greens, who are trying to cover up the complete and outrageous mismanagement of COVID by the state governments. Now, there are many things that we need to look at in this inquiry, and I just want to outline them today uh, to give my uh, uh, fellow colleague here, Senator Scar, who will be chairing it, uh, a few uh, points of reference to look at. And the first one I think we really need to look at is the origins of coronavirus. And who can we well remember uh, when our former colleague, Senator Maurice Payne, said we must have a, an inquiry into the origins of coronavirus, and then suddenly it all just dropped off a cliff as to where it came from. But it's quite interesting because at the moment, uh, over in the United States, Congress is currently holding an inquiry into the origins of coronavirus at the moment. Uh, and it's interesting what's happened is that a senior level CIA whistleblower has come forward to allege that the agency bribed analysts to change their opinion that COVID-19 most likely originated in a lab in Wuhan in China. Uh, and that's quite concerning. And according to this whistleblower, at the end of its review, six of the seven members of the team believe the intelligence and science were su sufficient to make a low confident assessment that coronavirus originated from a laboratory in Wuhan, China, uh, and that the whistleblower further contends that to come to the eventual public determination of uncertainty that the six members were given a significant monetary incentive to change their position. Now, who knows uh, if that's true or not? That's what Congress is currently uh, investigating. But we do know that Anthony Fauci, in a speech at Georgetown University back in January 2017, uh, in the day before uh, uh, Donald Trump was uh, sworn in as President of the United States, he said that there would be a surprise outbreak in the term of Trump's presidency. Now, I find that a completely bizarre statement to make. Who can actually predict that there will be, and it's been fact-checked, by the way, so when I put this up on social media, fact-checkers, Reuters have already committed, admitted that it's true. Uh, who on earth would come out and predict a virus in terms of the length of term of a politician? I mean, what has the term of a politician got to do with the, or with, with the virus. It is just completely bizarre. So that's something we can consider. And then we've got to look at the PCR testing. Now, I've asked the TGR for the genomic sequence used in the PCR tests to determine whether or not this testing correlates with the genome, the 29,000 base pairs in the coronavirus. Because what I want to know is, is how long is this, PCR, this sequence that the PCR tests use? What which part of the 29,000 base pairs do we use? And are those base pairs also in other types of viruses? Now, I've got a reply back that they won't, the TGA won't give them to me because it's commercial in confidence, which is really strange because I would have thought a virus, if it wasn't made in the lab, wouldn't be commercial confidence. I didn't know something that was naturally evolved uh, could be commercial in confidence. All very strange. So another one for your list there, Senator Scar. And then there's the coding by the World Health Organisation that said that anyone that tested positive to a PCR with it using a PCR test had to be coded as U701, which basically indicated that this person, if they tested positive coronavirus, therefore died of coronavirus. Now there's another code called U702 that said yes, the person may have tested positive coronavirus, but you don't code to 701 unless you've actually done an autopsy and the doctor actually says this person died from the virus and not some other comorbidity. Now, that was totally swept aside, and the World Health Organisation just said, no, code everyone with a, you know, a positive test from a PCR test has to go to U701. So everyone's dying from coronavirus, which is interesting because the number of people that died from the flu suddenly went to zero throughout 2021. Do I know? I don't. And then we've got to look at the lockdowns, the lockups, and the lockouts by the crazy state premiers. Who can forget Dan Andrews' statement? Why we've got to take the vaccine? Because if we don't take this vaccine, we're going to be lining up for machines that help us breathe. Oh my God, I am so scary. 
And then we've got the, state, uh, the Queensland Premier who was saying there was COVID in the sewerage and Queensland hospitals were for Queensland people and New South Wales hospitals were there for their people. Thank so you, I Senator look forward Rennie. to this inquiry. The time inquiry. for your response has expired. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.